Welcome back to another video. I am not a coward, so I'm making this video myself. Today I have a system that allows you to write a shortened version of a player's name on a shield. For example, for me it would write TS on a shield, based on my Minecraft in-game name, which is underscore TS, TS underscore. Here are some more examples for 5 Uso, Adv2711 and Gibsley. They would turn into Adv2711 and Gibbs with 1B. Originally I was going to use this for my upcoming remake of Hard Rush, uh, which is one of my older PvP maps, but uh, after a friendly conversation with Arvi, I decided against it. Now, I'll explain the different parts that are required to make this work. There are three major elements to this. First, we need to convert a player's name into a format that we can work with. Second, we need to shorten the player's name into a length that we can fit on a shield in a good looking way. And lastly, writing letters on a shield. To start out we need some way to work with the player name. This requires having the player name as a array. At this point this problem has become trivial to solve for us. We simply pass the player's name into a chair array using my string parser. I'll link the video where I talk about string parsing if you want to know more, but basically we put the name into the string parser, run the function and we get a chair array as output. It looks like this. The next problem is that we need some way to put letters on a shield. Most of you will probably be familiar with those banner slash shield patterns that put a single letter onto a banner slash shield, but that simply is enough. You can see it here and I want more than that. But luckily I'm able to use a resource pack to modify the patterns. Now I simply need to figure out how to exactly modify the patterns. For that I started to look up how you could display letters using a segment display. Some segment displays are often used in Minecraft Redstone to display numbers and could have easily been implemented using seven banner patterns. But they just aren't good enough to display letters. Numbers are fine, but letters don't work. So I looked into other segment displays and I found this. And using a 16 segment display, which is the one on the right, I can represent all letters and numbers reasonably well. Once I had gotten that far, I wanted to start creating the textures for the shield patterns, but I immediately spotted a major issue. There are only 40 different patterns. That means that if I wanted to use 16 segments per character, I can only fit two characters on a shield, with eight patterns remaining unused. So I did the math and figured out that if I somehow reduced the 16 segments to just 13, I could just barely squeeze in three characters on one shield, with one pattern remaining unused. 13 segments would be kind of problematic, because some characters would just be missing segments that they really need, but I figured it'd be fine. Now I went back into Minecraft to start experimenting with the patterns, but I quickly ran into another issue. Shields only support up to 16 patterns that light onto them at the same time. All patterns starting with the 17th one are simply not displayed. That means that if I'm trying to put three characters on a shield, I only have roughly five patterns per character. However, even on the most simple seven segment display, which is shown here, um, there's already characters that use more than five patterns. For example, the number eight uses seven, uh, seven segments and the number zero uses six segments. On a 13 segment display, it probably use even more. At this point, somebody with common sense may conclude that perhaps writing text on shields isn't particularly feasible after all. However, I had a different idea. What if I put four characters on a shield instead of three? Now, you may be wondering how that helps, and the answer simply is it doesn't. It just makes everything far worse. Luckily, I had two additional ideas. First, what if I didn't cut down the number of segments? 13 segments are lame. I want all 16 of them. And second, what if I added two additional segments? The half circle on the left and right each? Now, here's where we are at. I want to put four characters on a shield. Each of the four character positions can only use 10 of the patterns, as there's only 14 total. And each individual character can only use four of those 10 patterns as the shield can only have 16 patterns in total. The 10 patterns need to somehow implement the 16 segments, as well as my two semicircles, so 18 segments in total. Now, the math doesn't quite add up here, so I had to find solutions. My maybe idea behind fitting the 18 segments into 10 patterns came to me when I discovered the sort of was a 41st pattern. This additional pattern is the shield base texture and is always applied by default, meaning it doesn't count towards the 16 pattern limit. I decided to put some commonly used segments onto the base already. If the character I was trying to make needed those, then good for me. But if it didn't, I need some way to get rid of them again. Here's the main idea for optimizing the 18 segments down into 10 patterns. Patterns can both be used additively as well as subtractively. 
What that means is that each shield pattern includes several segments and that each segment is included in more than one pattern. If I want to add all segments from one pattern to the shield, I can apply this pattern using the color black. However, I can also remove all the segments from the shield again by applying the same pattern using the color white, which is the same as the background. Using this method, I can control a greater amount of segments the number of patterns used. Here's how that works. These are the segments that are already on the base texture. And this is what changes if I add segment 1 with the color black. You can see one additional line appears. And here is alternatively what happens if I add the same segment in white. You can see that two lines of the base texture disappear. As you can see, I can end up with two entirely different segment combinations using just a single pattern with two different colors. I use this method for 6 of the 10 patterns I have per character position. Together those cover 10 bigger segments as well as an additional 8 smaller segments. Not all combination of these segments can actually be displayed on a banner, but I chose the patterns in a way where I could get all combination that I need to create all the letters I want. If I disable and re-enable the layers for the different patterns, you can see that each pattern modifies several of the segments at the same time. In Minecraft none of these have any color of course, that's simply for showcase purposes. You can also see that on each segment there's numbers, these numbers correspond to which pattern adds the segment. Zero means the base adds it and the other numbers mean that segment 1 or 2 or 3 or 5 or 6 adds this segment. If I disable and re-enable segment 1, you can see that it uh, modifies the top left as well as two of the diagonal lines. Um, segment 2 changes the entire left part. Uh, then next up is segment 3, which changes the top and the diagonal from the top right to the bottom left. Then segment 4 changes the top and the bottom. Segment 5 changes the top right as well as these two diagonals here. And finally segment 6 changes the entire right side. However, you may have noticed that a few segments are missing. The horizontal line and vertical line in the middle as well as the two semicircles. For these final four patterns I went with a different approach. The first six patterns, either white, black or white, this is done by the texture being white and Minecraft coloring it either white or black, depending on which color I set in the game. However, for these final four patterns, I put both black and white onto the texture. These patterns are not really usable for anything if they color black by the game, but if they colored white, they will now buy white both black and white onto the shield at the same time. As you can see, these four special patterns cover some of the other segments entirely or cut others in half. For example, if I enable both pattern 9 and 10, which is this and this, you can see how the letters Q and O are made. Most of the background is covered, but there's this tiny gap here, which I can use to make Q. Otherwise, it will be the letter O. And if I use pattern 7, which is the middle vertical line, this one, you can kind of make out how K, J or T could be made, or I. These special patterns can also cut each other in half. So if I enable the middle horizontal line, you can see that the middle vertical line is cut in half. I can switch them around and we'll get this. Now that all the patterns are ready, it was time to make the shields. I made all the uppercase letters, all the numbers, a space and an underscore. Looking at some of these characters and the number of patterns used to them can be rather amusing. At the top we have the base with no patterns that are applied and below there are characters that only need the two patterns such as O and P. In the next row you can see for example that the letter I needs more patterns than T, even though it seems like the T is just an I with an additional line. And that is true, but the top line for the T is actually included in the base already, which is up here again. And so for the eye, I actually need an additional pattern to cover this top line with white. Some of these characters look rather good, while others like the R are, are a bit unfortunate. In the bottom two rows here, you can see some characters that I couldn't quite fit into just four patterns. And I needed five patterns or even six to create them. Um, I'll go over how I solve that problem in a bit. And then over here are all the characters I made together. You can see the entire alphabet, the numbers, space and underscore. Now the code for generating text on shields is actually quite easy. I just need to put an array of characters into storage and then running this function will give me the shield. 
For this, it simply looks up which patterns are used for each character, adds them to an array, and finally it copies the array into the data of a shield and gives me the shield. Uh, this shield, for example, is Atri. As you can see, Atri perfectly fits the shield, but um, there shouldn't there be a problem because the D is five patterns long. No, in this case, we're actually kind of lucky because the A and the I only need three patterns, while the R uses four. So actually, even though there is one letter that uh, has more patterns than it should use, since there are two that use less than they should use, uh, it's fine. And the word R we only uses five, 15 of 16 patterns in total. However, with other words like D, D, A, for example, there will, there will be an issue. Because each D needs five patterns and the A needs three, we'd need a total of 18 for this combination, which is two above the limit. To solve this, I made alternative versions of the characters that use more than four patterns, and I rated them by how bad they are. All of these alternative versions use four patterns or less. If the shield generation goes above the pattern limit on the first attempt, it tries again, this time attempting to replace some of the characters with the slightly worse versions that use fewer patterns. For example, the D, J, and X in the bottom row here still look pretty decent. So if the first attempt doesn't fit, it checks if these characters exist and attempt to, attempts to use the slightly worse versions. If that doesn't succeed, it tries again, this time also attempting to replace characters such as B, M and D again, this time with an even worse version. Uh, those don't look as good, but they're still acceptable. If that still doesn't succeed, it has a final attempt, where it tries replacements on all the characters that use more than four characters. Some of these look pretty bad, such as the Zix that just has holes in it, or the K over there, which just has an additional random line. But um, it's not a huge issue, because they, those should only very rarely be needed. With this out of the way, we can finally look at DDDA. The first two Ds are changed into the slightly worse version with that additional dot, but the rest is fine. You can also try DDDX. And here we'll see that all the Ds are the ugly version now and the X is still fine. In the chat, we can see the results of each attempt. So on the first attempt with the best characters, it needed to use 21 patterns. So I tried again with the slightly worse version, that is the D with the dot, and it still reached 18 patterns. So it had to optimize it once again, and on the third attempt uh, it succeeded and got it down to 15 patterns. On the wall of characters I showed earlier, you can also see this in action. For example, the J and the X use their worse version, and here's the normal version for comparison. As you probably already noticed, the font I use is rather questionable. And that, as well as the fact that putting names on shields is just very random, is why we aren't actually using this in hard rush. But I figured the methods behind it are interesting enough to make a video about it. Now that we can put text on our shield, we'll need to shorten player names into four characters or less. I already made something similar to this for a recently released map, Tales of Glassford, but the version for this is more advanced. I'll explain what it does, using a bunch of examples that this function generates. Each player name is inputted as a string, which is then passed and sent to the name simplifier. The name simplifier does a variety of operations on the name to get the optimal for character name. There are two elements to the simplifier. The more complicated part returns the red, non-final result, and the more simple part turns that into the green part. The white text is the input. I'll go over the red part first. Let's start with uh, chopper2112. Here we can see that the double letters are removed, the P. Generally, the name should still be recognizable without them, one P is good enough. You may have also already seen the same thing at the start of the video with the Gibbs shield, where the second P in Gibbs's name is missing. Additionally, trailing numbers are removed and returned separately. This will be relevant later. On Bart's name, you can see that my system looks for case changes to extract words from the name. It splits the name into word segments, here it would be Bart, De, and Bart again, by detecting case changes or alternatively underscores. And then it chooses the first segment that uh, is two characters or longer, and that is not a word that is in the ignore list. This list currently contains the words De and Its, which are somewhat common in names, but shouldn't be used as a nickname for players. You can actually see that here with 
uh, the Zuzu graft, where it turns into Zuzu, even though the met is long enough to be considered a word, but because it's on the ignore list, it's ignored and it chooses the next word instead. Also here, it's split into words with underscores instead of with case changes. Additionally, if a word is extracted from the name, the first letter is capitalized. So the S is an uppercase here. For Bart, it's already uppercase. Uh, On CTL's name, we can see that underscores are never used in the final output. As none of the three segments in the name are considered a word, they are instead all concatenated and the first letter of each is capitalized. Additionally, there's a space which is visualized using a tilde in this output. There are quite a few names where numbers are used in place of letters. If a number between letters is detected, the name simplifier attempts to convert this number back into the character it's replacing. For Quinton, this turns the 1 into an i. Same also happens for my own alt, which is called Why Do People Have to Die? And for Carlos, this system is almost like magic. Additionally, numbers at the start of the name are also valid for the system. Uh, this can be seen with 5 Uso, which is up here, where the 5 turns into an S. If there are several numbers in a row, such as for DS43M, the numbers are kept intact. There's also an additional system that checks for a combination of two letters being repeated. If that can be found, the second occurrence of those two letters is removed. This can be seen in mine and Mr. K's name, where for me, the second TS is removed, and for Mr. K, the second Q is removed. As you can see down here in this section, while most of the red names are pretty good, the green ones aren't always perfect. But generally, there's just nothing that can be done, as four characters just aren't enough for all names to fit well. Now the part that turns the red version into the green one is rather simple. There are just a few cases. First, if the word is exactly four characters, it is immediately chosen. This can be seen for adv2711, where it just ignores the numbers entirely, as the name part is already perfect. There's also a lot of names where the word is four characters and there are no numbers. Obviously the word is chosen here as well. We can see that for jbib, for example. If the word part is not four characters, but there are exactly four numbers, from the number thing I talked about earlier, uh, the numbers are chosen instead of the letters. This is what happens to chopper 2112, for example, where the nickname used on the shield would simply be 2112. If the word part is not exactly four characters and there are exactly two numbers, then the first letter and the two numbers are concatenated. You can see this for Wilda 50 and Frederick 90. Additionally, the one letter that is used is returned to its original case. So you can see that while the F is capitalized here, it's reversed into its original case here. Lastly, if none of these are true, the queen output is simply the first four characters of the word, as can be seen with perspective. Or if there are no characters at all, it uses the first four numbers, as can be seen with those two examples here. Additionally, spaces are added to make sure names shorter than four characters are still four characters long. Names that are one or two characters get a space at the start, as you can see with no leaf clever or i underscore underscore. And uh, names with three characters simply get a space at the end. After that, it's just a matter of copying the queen output from the simplifier into the input of the shield generator, and we can get shields that have player nicknames like these. Alright, that's it. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. If for some reason you want to use this for something, even with that questionable font, let me know. I'll see you again next time I actually do a video myself, which is probably gonna be 2022 at this point. Thanks for watching. Bye.